In this module, we're going to describe the implications that our schematic has to the actual physical implementation, the construction of the hardware, more specifically the layout of the printed circuit board. Uh, power supply designers have found many cases the hard way that layout considerations often can lead to very substantial implications of whether a particular design will succeed or fail when you actually try to build hardware and expect to get reasonable performance. The problem with it, with it, with uh, de defining a layout requirements is that a lot of the problems that you have to fight are based upon information that you often don't have. The parasitic elements that are present in all of these components which we don't often have very quantitative information and so we have to make every effort to uh, assume the worst and design accordingly recognizing where each issue could create a problem in our overall placement of parts on a printed circuit board. So there's a series of rules and considerations that we go through to, to, um, to go through this thought process. But first and foremost, the person that's doing the printed circuit board has to be very closely coupled to the circuit designer because it's the circuit designer who knows where the currents are flowing, where the fast rise and fall signals are. And this is very important knowledge to the person that's actually going to lay out the board. Usually, typically, we will have to start with the power components because the things that will be affected most strongly with the parasitic elements are stray um, inductances, stray capacitances, additional resistance, uh, all of these things that can be affected by high pulses, uh, fast rise and fall times, and high currents that are flowing in our circuit components. So you start by defining the circuit components, the power devices and the bypass capacitors that uh, are to be able to handle the high frequency components in those power devices. These are the most critical components and those, the, the, the basic rule of thumb there is get them as close together as possible and use wide, um, heavy copper if you can get it um, to be able to minimize both the uh, resistance as well as any parasitic inductance that might be associated with them. Recognize that when you have current flowing in a conductor, um, that current is going in one direction to get from point A to point B, and ultimately it has to circle back uh, to a fur return path, and in the process that creates the loop. An inductance in a circuit is defined by a loop of, of conducting um, current. And so you want to try to minimize loop generation or loop uh, uh, occurrence in your printed circuit boards as much as possible. That emphasizes why you put these power devices at the high current uh, parts of them anyway as close together, but you also want to have them as the, the feed and the return paths need to be as close together as possible to minimize the overall loop area. So we're talking about um, the loops that, that would uh, create stray inductance. The, the, power, the printed circuit traces themselves have uh, resistance. It can present voltage drops that would be able to, or would be uh, uh, responsible for generating noise in what are supposed to be ground lines and parts of the circuit that aren't supposed to see them. So again, um, trying to keep the, uh, the high current uh, paths uh, in path in circuit traces that have the lowest possible resistance will go a long way towards doing that. Uh, the comment that's made here is uh, getting printed circuit boards that have to handle high current with greater thickness of the actual copper layer going to two ounce instead of one ounce copper could make a significant difference just because of the losses associated with the connections between these power components. The high speed switching of our uh, square waves or pulses uh, generate high frequency harmonics that can easily be transmitted into very sensitive portions of the circuit. So that's another factor of identifying where the fast current uh, changes, the fast rise and fall times of both voltage and current occur in the circuit and making sure that those are as far away 
from the sensitive parts, which would be the analog circuits where the, fo the feedback or the, uh, the reference or the compensation circuits uh, tend to be. Three terminals on the side for the, um, the, the switch node, which goes to the output inductor, and then there's three power grounds uh, that go around the left, upper left-hand corner. That's where the high current is. Those are the connections that we want to get to the output circuit as close and as tight as you can, and you want to also have them closely coupled to the bypass capacitors so that the loops enclosed are very minimal. We've got a signal ground, a, signal, a single signal ground on the uh, top edge there. There's not much current there, so we don't need much of, we only need one pin. Uh, and that's easily routed, about, routed out to the right-hand side where all of the sensitive circuitry is, the, uh, the voltage reference, the, uh, uh, the op-amp, uh, the air amplifier terminals, uh, compensation components are all over on that side, and we've done as much as possible to allow you, the uh, printed circuit uh, designer, to uh, optimize the layout. So, um, in addition to keeping these uh, power devices short, um, we want to um, minimize the area of the switching node because that has the potential to generate parasitic capacity, which could also radiate noise. So we're in a little bit of a, of a quandary here. It's a, again, it's a trade-off. We want to have large copper areas to handle the current, but in these particular, the particular area where that uh, switch node is, is a place where there's large rise and uh, fast rise and fall times, and so that might want to be smaller just to keep the parasitic capacitor down. Also helps, as I said, to place high frequency capacitors very close to the, high, the, the integrated circuit because they're best at the higher frequencies, the electro electrolytics that have um, equivalent series resistance and, uh, and more parasitic elements can be a little further away because they're not going to handle the high frequency currents anyway. Uh, we talked about using separate grounds, one for analog, one for power, and keep them separate. And we also want to be able, though, to make sure that we do define a single ground point as the reference for the integrated circuit. And you may have noticed that the analog ground and the signal ground in that uh, pinout I showed you were right next to each other. That's because that is the place where we would want to connect the two grounds together. These uh, pictures on the left show some of the implications of what I've been talking about. Um, uh, you see the power ground, which is handling high currents. In this case, um, we show it coming from the uh, from the the integrated circuit package and going off uh, to the right where we pick up the bypass capacitors. The high frequency ceramics as close to the package as possible. If we had an external synchronous rectifier, we'd want to put that, connect that, uh, the source pin there to ground, um, again, as close in as we could get it. In the, uh, when we integrate the, the um, synchronous rectifier, we solve that problem by making that co uh, connection inside the integrated circuit. Um, but even so, the, the rest of the power components head off to the right, and the, you can see the analog components all getting tied to ground and going to signal ground, and right at that point, they're tied together. In actually doing your layout, sometimes you're restricted by other things. Again, it's the pin that we're talking about, in fact, there's some uh, integrated circuits where we don't have separate analog and power grounds, but even then, we want to keep the circuit components on the board separate, even if they have to go to a single pin. And so we minimize any differential impedance between them by taking them to the same pins, but from opposite directions. And you see one alternative of going underneath the package to stay away from the high current uh, ground trace um, and uh, the other way, uh, raking it around, but again, keeping, getting it around as quickly as possible.
So these are some of the techniques, some of the uh, considerations that go into making an effective layout, and I hope they will be useful and that your designer pays good attention to them when he goes to implement the, the schematic that you've uh, put your heart into.